What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Pikmin. In the last episode, we finished up the Impact Site and the Forest Naval. The Forest Naval and, and the Impact Site actually had a little bit of a theme of getting all of the parts in the time I wanted to, but not really taking full advantage of all of the corpses and pellets we found along the way. And honestly, I think that might just be a theme for the playthrough as a whole. But nevertheless, I'm actually quite happy with the efficiency and how quickly we've been able to go through these different levels, gather the parts and everything. It's honestly faster than I've ever done it before, so uh, it's, you know, a little pat on the back. <laughs> and I hope you guys are looking forward to what we have going on in the Forest of Hope. We have three parts left, and I think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to get all of them in one day. But, but I think we can do it, so... I'm gonna try. It's gonna require some pretty careful planning. And so I'm gonna encourage you that even though my mind will probably be racing with regards to different planning, please do take some time to appreciate everything that this level has to offer because, well, after today, hopefully we're not coming back. All right, so we're gonna pluck some of these guys. Unfortunately, the fact that they're here means that we can't take out, I guess, you know, Pikmin of other color types, which you're probably familiar with by now if you've been watching the other episodes. And it limits my tactical capabilities if I know I can't withdraw a certain number of Pikmin, or at least in the types that are, or the colors that I want. So we'll do this for now, and then we can wait briefly for them to go. Okay. So now we've got um, a pretty big crew here, obviously. You'll notice there's one Pikmin missing, and what's actually pretty interesting is, well, I guess as a quick preview, here's one of the parts we're going to be getting today, and then the other two parts are over here. This one will be particularly interesting, so um, look forward to that one. But what you'll also notice here is there's a little green dot here, which means there's a sprouted Pikmin. And you might be wondering, how the heck did that get there? Well, I'm not sure if Olimar's mentioned it yet, but if a flower Pikmin dies, there's actually a, um, a good chance that- oh, wait a minute, don't- It's very common if you miss the- the Bulborb. The Dwarf Bulborb, that is. For it to just run after the large one. Um, but if a flower Pikmin dies, there's a chance that it'll be- the next time you go there, there'll actually be, like, a sprout there. So that's actually what's over there. Now... We'll get to this in a moment. What we're going to do right now is take some of our blues here. Why do I only have 43? Huh. Um, I don't know, but we're going to have them working on that door there because that's going to allow us, you'll see, so these blues are working on a gate there that's going to allow us access to this platform where we'll have another door to break down to get into this area with that part. So I'm going to want them working on that relatively early on. So that's the, the rationale there. We can have these guys in the meantime take all this stuff back just to, again, take advantage of the enemies we do defeat and the opportunities we unlock as a result. I've been playing a little bit of Pikmin 2 lately, and I'm definitely missing out on the ability to just kind of hit start and see how many of each Pikmin are in your command, because it looks like we might be missing a couple. But, actually no, I think we're alright. No, I think we're, we're missing one because I had 99 at first and then I threw eight at that wall. So there's there's one Pikmin probably floating around somewhere. Hmm. Odd. Okay, well, nevertheless. So in the past, you've probably seen me do a lot of throwing Pikmin at these Bulborbs. When you have a large enough army, it just makes sense to do this. All right, so we're going to take some of our blues here. Unfortunately... These guys are uh, undoing all of the hard work that we did in trying to build this bridge. So what we're actually going to do is have two guys working on that, and then no, don't don't carry the corpse back. Work on the bridge. Okay, guys, stop carrying back the enemies, please. I know you're eager to grow your numbers and everything, but it's not really what I'm looking for right now. All right, and we'll get, let's see, um, that, sh that should be good. Okay, and now with our remaining guys, did those guys, oh, they got distracted. They were, I guess, successful with whatever they were distracted by. <laughs> but I was not 
I wasn't exactly looking for them to get distracted in that manner. Okay, so we've got some big bulb orbs. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna prepare, like I said, there's a part up here. You might be wondering, where is it? <laughs> because I don't actually see it. And that's gonna, that's your first clue about, well, there's more than meets the eye with this upcoming part. But what we're gonna need to do for this is we're actually gonna have to send our red army up here. Wait, why are, come on blues, that was not what I, what I wanted. You guys can, I guess, pluck all the nectar. That's fine by me if you want to do that. What we're gonna wanna do is get all those guys up there because, well, you'll see that we're gonna run into a little bit of a bottleneck, both literally and figuratively, for getting them over. So, all right, let's get back to my, my preferred viewing angle. We've got quite a few bulb orbs here. Honestly, what I'm gonna try to do is route the Pikmin so that they don't have to walk through here. That way we don't have to spend time actually fighting those enemies. Now this is a new area we haven't explored yet because we didn't have water Pikmin, but now we can because, well, we have the water Pikmin that can actually move this box. We can throw them from in the water. Something worth note is that you can actually move that box with just red Pikmin if you throw them on top of the box. And what the snagrit? <laughs> that, my friends, is a snagrit. And you'll notice that there's more than one. Come on, come on. No, no, we're already losing Pikmin. We've already lost three Pikmin. Lovely. Well, what you'll notice is the part has moved to exactly where the snagrit is. So this particular snagrit has the part. There are three of them in this area. Normally, the completionist in me would want to... Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Would want to defeat all three of them. You'll notice we just defeated that really quickly. And you might be wondering how that happened. The, uh, I guess the, the gist of it is when you fight the Snagrit, it comes out of the ground. Sometimes it gets stuck like that, and that's a great opportunity to hit it in its head as opposed to its body. Its head is its weak point, so that's, um, actually the strategy that I like to use is to wait for it. No, nope, come on. And what's so funny is, I'm gonna pause so I can actually get my thoughts out, is sometimes it'll just pop right up and you have to wait for it, really. You can throw Pikmin at its head, but it's honestly risky and not that great of a strategy in terms of damage output. So I like to just wait until they get stuck on their way out of the ground, but it's not always a guarantee. And in some of my previous practice runs, uh, I was waiting there forever for that to happen. And it's just really funny that it happens so quickly. Um, but yeah, its head is its weak point. So when you're able to swarm its head as it's stuck coming out of the ground, you can do so much damage and really take it out easily. You get tons of pellets for defeating them. So if you're, I guess, moving at a slower pace, I highly recommend taking a whole bunch of Pikmin here and defeating them and actually collecting everything. There are three of them in total, but only one of them has the part. And that's what we're most concerned with right now because it's a very important part, it's the Geiger counter. Every spaceship needs one of these, but I don't actually know what it's for. Every once in a while it goes wild and lets out a lot of noise, but I never pay much attention to it, so it doesn't do me much good. I really should read that manual one of these days. And for those of you that don't know, a Geiger counter detects radiation. So, that's something that all of us should absolutely be paying attention to. Now you might be wondering why I brought the blue Pikmin over specifically to carry this part. And the, the reasoning is, well, You'll notice that the water Pikmin, or the blue Pikmin, are able to carry parts through water. If you only put water Pikmin on the part, they'll root the route, or they'll um, create a path back to the ship that's through the water and through this gate, which is significantly shorter. But if you have any red Pikmin taking it back, they'll move it all the way along here, all the way through here, and then around, which is significantly longer. And you also have to defeat all of the bulb orbs and stuff along the way, which obviously um, takes a lot more time. So, we're not doing that. And instead, we're letting our friends carry that back like that. I guess you guys can carry that back along the way. Always looking to build up those numbers. And then the next thing we're gonna need to do is check on those guys over there. How's their progress coming along? Okay, they're moving pretty well. Um, I think those blues there are actually done. But what I'd like to do right now is check our progress over here. So let's take these reds and see if they've finished this wall. They have, okay, great. I didn't, I must've been distracted. I didn't hear the jingle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send up a whole bunch of our reds here. 
I don't know why that one red Pikmin was uh, stranded there for a moment, but... Alright, they brought that back, so we got plenty. I think we're doing really well on time, actually. The Geiger counter. This noisy gauge is always letting off spontaneous clicks and buzzes. It can be kind of annoying. It's like a smoke detector. It can be really annoying with the noises and stuff that it does, uh, but it could save your life. I have now recovered 17 out of 30 parts, just 12 more. Granted, <laughs> just 12. 12 is quite a few. So what we're going to do is now start work on this gate. And because all these guys are flowers from the really solid Snagrit fight, um, I don't even need to spend time flowering them up there. So that's wonderful. So they're going to work on that for quite some time. You might have gotten a sneak peek at what we're going to have to battle on the other side of that. It's not easy, but it does definitely indicate what its weak points and everything are. So they're working pretty well there. <laughs> working really well there, actually. So let's send them to help out these guys. We had, I think, 15 working on them. And you'll notice there's the next part that we have to work with. I actually really appreciate that they're programmed so that if you throw them near the start of the bridge, they'll go to the end of the bridge there. So you can actually... Oh my goodness, my dog. Sorry about that. As much as I... What was, what was I doing? They're working on that. Oh, so I was going to go on the bridge and wait. Um, As much as I love her, sometimes her incessant barking just drives me up a wall. So we have another part here. It is the Sagittarius. I think we've already found the Libra, now the Sagittarius. My son gave this to me as a present. It brings me, it brings to mind visions of my son back home on planet Hokote. Oh, to be back there right now. Oh, Olimar, you'll make it. If it's, I can ensure you that you'll make it if it's the last thing I do. All right, you guys can uh, speed things up a little bit. All right, so while they're taking that back, we can have the other blues start to take back some of these corpses, just to move things along. Like I said, I think we're doing pretty well on time, in terms of... Those other guys are already working on that wall, which is really good. And... Honestly, I'll probably take these guys to go meet them there in just a second. Wow, some nectar already. Oh, they finished that wall! That's really surprising. So we probably have about 50 reds and like 10 blues there. Okay, so I probably don't need to bring too many more Pikmin with me, but Sagittarius, this was a gift for my son. He must be very worried about me. Oh, poor parent, Olimar. So what we can do is grab these guys. We don't need all of them. I'll probably bring like 15 more. Well. Maybe a little bit more. Ah, never mind. I don't want to waste the time. <laughs> but yeah, so now the Snagrit was like one of the big boss battles of the Forest of Hope. This upcoming enemy is also not, well, a, a mini boss, I would say. So when we walk into the arena, what do we see? We find the Armored Cannon Beetle. And you'll notice it has this armored shell. Um, actually, yeah, we can fight it first. And so it'll, like, inhale, and then shoot out these big boulders. And so its weakness is that when it inhales, you can actually throw a Pikmin, and it'll, I guess, like, stop up its blow horn or whatever, or whatever that hole is. Oh man. So close to getting a one cycle. Come on, come on. And the Pikmin just, like, love... <laughs> just, like, love clinging to it to try to hit its shell. I don't know why. Come on. Okay, so we should be able to take it down with this. Perfect. So now the question is, who do we want to get what? Um, let's have the blues primarily take the armored cannon beetle itself. Yeah, I think that's pretty fitting. And then we can have the one blue take that pellet back. And how many do we have here? 38, perfect. So you can take that back, and now, here is the part we unlocked. The first time I fought those armored cannon beetles, they're so they're so difficult. Um, Olimar does offer a little bit of a hint as to what to do about them in one of the later journal entries, but 
I thought you had to plug up their hole with bomb rocks before. So, and then after you get the bomb rock, you had to bring in the red Pikmin, and it was it was a mess. But <laughs> at last, my radiation canopy. This turns the harsh radiation of deep space into soft infrared rays that are easy on the body. I'll sleep like a baby once I get back. Get this back to the ship. Poor Alomar, experiencing so much radiation without his without understanding what his Geiger counter was doing, and without having the radiation canopy. All right. Well, at the very least, we know Alomar will be a lot safer after we're done with the Forest of Hope. And with that, I think we've actually gotten all of the parts. So in the meantime, I'll hit these pellet posies so we can boost our numbers a little bit. I think we could probably use... Well, they're going to get blues. I mean, I think we're doing fine on numbers for the most part. Look at all of those blues. Alright. And yeah, I think we're good on yellows too, so... I mean, at this point, we'll probably focus on just flowering up all of these guys. I feel like every other day of this <laughs> Let's Play, I've been so stressed at the end of each day trying to collect corpses, trying to... I don't know, pluck Pikmin, trying to flower up, and really never getting it all done, that it feels so odd to, to have some time. I'll have to inspect it later to make sure it hasn't cracked. I'll be in for even more trouble if I have any radiation leaks. I've now recovered 19 out of 30 parts. If I can just find 10 more, I should be able to increase my possibilities. I love the little, like, moo sounds they make when they're just free, chilling there. Let's enjoy some of the Forest Hope's wonderful soundtrack. It's so soothing, especially as we approach sunset. Right? <laughs> it's always so calming. Alright, so what we'll do... Any... No, those guys are already flowers. Alright, well let's... Let's flower up the guys that we do have. A nice, tight little pack. There's like a little window where you can get multiple Pikmin to flower up on the same bit of nectar. So you gotta try and take advantage of that as much as you can. And with that, all those guys are flowered up. So I think what I'm going to want to do right now is something I like to do is make sure I have a hundred flower Pikmin of every, I guess, color. And the best way for me to see that is to deposit all my Pikmin and then take out a hundred and see if there are any buds, any flowers, any leaves, or whatever it may be. Any leaves. Okay, so let's start with drawing Pikmin. Actually, I know what I want to do. Guys, you gotta stay there. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can see how they keep, like, entering my command. Alright, finally good. Where is this lone Pikmin that died? Look at that. Okay. I had to. I had to. We might bring a gigantic Bulbor back to our base, but I had to. Ooh, secret passage back. <laughs> okay, so look at this. We do not have a hundred flowers by any means, right? So this is where it'd be really effective to Nectar up. And I think that was really effective because I'm not seeing, I think we're all flowered up. Okay, so that confirms that we have at least 100, or I think actually exactly 100 now, <laughs> um, red flowers. I think we're good on blues actually, but that's the next important one that I need to have flowers of, just because they're gonna be so important in, I almost said the perplexed pool. <laughs> Again, I've been playing Pikmin 2 recently, and, um, but no, we're gonna be heading to the distant spring next. So let's see here, all flowers? I think we should have quite a few flowers from the impact site, yeah. So we've got a hundred flowers there. Next up is the yellow Pikmin. Again, I think we still have like a solid amount of yellow Pikmin flowered, but it doesn't hurt to check. And we only have a few seconds left, but 
And that's alright, if we can flower up even a few of them, it'll be helpful, so. Okay, so I'm starting to see some buds. Alright guys, come on over. It's not a lot, but there's something. <laughs> Alright, well, again, uh, don't need to worry about them not being in my party at the end there, because we're all back at the base, and look at that army of yellow Pikmin. <laughs> Still quite a few leaves and, or leaves and buds, but not too big of a problem. Again, yellow Pikmin, we really won't ever need more than 30 or 40 at a time from here on out, so as long as we have like 70 or so flowers, we can very comfortably potentially even lose an entire squad at once and still have a solid backup team. And no Pikmin left behind. And that, my friends, is the end of the Forest of Hope for us. Eight days since impact. I've seen that at times the leaf atop of Pikmin's head will grow into a bud and then a flower. It appears that if I do not pick the Pikmin sprouts, they gradually bloom over time. Fascinating. This melding of plant and animal traits is surely unique in the natural world. I think that's something that always spoke to me, is just Olimar's somewhat scientific, you know, um, observational uh, mindset with regards to the whole experience of his time on this planet. That's always been really interesting to me. I found the increased swiftness of the flower pigment to be of tremendous benefit. Also, my diligent observation has recorded instances in which... Here we go. Flower Pikmin lost in battle have left seeds behind. This is why on days after fierce battles, I occasionally find new sprouts growing. As we saw today. So we unfortunately lost five Pikmin to the Snagrit, I believe. But look at those numbers. We actually have more blue P Pikmin than uh, red Pikmin right now. So we're, we're doing really well. We have 100 blue flowers, we have 100 red flowers, and we have, you know, over 150 reds in the back and over 170 blues in the back and we got plenty of yellow so I'm very happy with that that was a solid day and again it was pretty nice to have a little bit of time at the end I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see the armored cannon beetle and the snaggard the snaggard is a very cool design and the battle itself is very neat uh, it's very difficult to try to figure out a strategy at first um, ranging from throwing yellow pikmin at its head to try to get it to retreat back into its hole if you do enough damage or doing damage off quickly it'll um, it'll retreat and so it won't just pick away at your Pikmin crew, but yeah, it's um, it's a fun battle. And the Forest of Hope again is is a great place. I really enjoyed it. It's the first like real level of the game. But yeah, look at that! All the parts in the Forest Naval, all the parts at the Impact Site, all the parts of the Forest of Hope. So all that's left now is the Distant Spring. Technically, the the hardest area in the game. I really like it. It's, it's tough, but again, um, I really like the geography, I like the colors, I like how light it is, I like how calming and serene the music is. You can see a part off in the distance, right close to where we start. One of the first things I like to do, actually, is use the map to just kind of take a look at the geography and see what are we dealing with. There are obviously a lot of parts here, especially on that left side, and you can see there's a whole bunch of water here. So this you know, unsurprisingly, is going to be very water Pikmin heavy, especially on that right side. And there's this really intricate structure going on here with the different trees, and it looks like there are some gates there. So there's this left side tends to be more complex. I think today we're going to try to handle these three parts on the right. I, I feel pretty comfortable about getting these two here. This one might be a little bit of a stretch, but, but we'll see. Unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with Wallywogs everybody's favorite. I think I'm actually gonna pull out all a full hundred Pikmin crew right off the bat. So here's something that's actually um, really cool just puzzle wise. They want you to throw I think that's that should be good. We'll leave the rest of them there. What's really cool about this geography you can see this sort of like curve shape right? Well the part is up here on a ledge and there's this ledge working around here with the platform on the outside. We can call the Pikmin and we can move them along the ledge without obviously having them fall off as we move along this inner circle here. So that's that's kind of the, the puzzle here that we're solving. So you can see that as we move along this inner side, the Pikmin are following along on the outer curve and getting closer and closer to the, uh, the part. And then when we get close, before they end up falling off, 
we can just do that so that they all hop on and we're good. Let's bring these guys down and we're already cruising along. <laughs> it's a very light part, I guess. I found the repair type bolt. This robotic marvel can fix just about anything in the ship that's broken. That's good because I get terribly bored fixing little glitches. I'm sure that's great for the ship. Okay, so let's get the rest of our army here. You'll notice right off there we got a yellow Wallywog. They function the same as the regular Wallywogs. The big difference being what is Huh? Did you guys see that? It's like it was underground. But like right at the edge of the the sand. So <laughs> we can see it underground before it actually emerged from the sand. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's that's really interesting. Repair type bolt. This looks like an ordinary bolt, but it is actually a repair robot. <laughs> That's really funny. When you first read the description, it's kind of like a all-purpose bolt that comes to mind, right? Something you can just kind of plug in anywhere and it'll work. But no, it's actually a robot disguised as a bolt. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So we've recovered now 20 parts. If I can just find nine more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. All right, we've got an ongoing battle. And I think we're okay. So what we're going to want to do is I'll, I guess we'll get a few guys going on there. But look at this monster. So this is called a bull bear. And it's guarding this part all the way over here. And bull bears have a lot more HP and they do a lot more damage. They're also a lot more aggressive. Admittedly, I'm probably rushing this to try to fight it with... Um, What's it called? Blue Pikmin as opposed to Red Pikmin, which have a much better damage output. But I think we can make it work. Oh no, don't eat my guys, don't eat my guys, don't turn around in time. Oh, did we save them? Did you see that? It literally like just started to munch on some of my Pikmin before we survived. Wow, okay, so that was a really close call, but we made it through. I found my massage machine. Put this right down in the lower back area and let it get to work. I can't wait until I get it installed again as my lower lumbar region has been paining me ever since the crash. Ah, sweet relief. Gotta get that relief for Olimar. So one thing that's a little bit unfortunate about this level is that the water Pikmin, even though they obviously can go in the water, will not walk through the water to get to um, the ship, which is a pain because it means that these guys are gonna bring this part all the way over to this bridge. And even though they can walk in the water and walk around, they're not gonna be able to continue. So instead, we're gonna have all of them working on this bridge to just kind of speed things up. They're gonna start bringing this bull bear over so we can get moving with that pretty quickly when we get the chance. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take some of the Pikmin here. Actually, I should have just taken these guys. Um, and we're gonna start fighting the Wallywog over here because these Wallywogs, can really pack a punch. But we're gonna try to fight them a relatively safe way, just like we did in um, the Forest Naval. And so I gotta remember to stay patient, not try to pack on too many Pikmin towards the end there. Because you don't wanna throw Pikmin after it's already jumped into the air, because then, well, those Pikmin will get crushed. And that's obviously not good for everyone involved, except for the Wally one, of course. <laughs> Oh, I got distracted talking to you guys. Time to pay more attention. And I don't think they've finished the bridge just yet. We're almost done. All right, this will be the last cycle. It does always finish its jump. So it's like, even though you might kill it, it's still gonna go up for one last big jump and eventual fall. All right, so we got another one here. Okay, so that was a little bit different. He definitely moved towards the army with that one. Come on. So they finished that, which is nice. Oh, I got distracted thinking about what I want them to do. No, 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 guys, come back, come back. Nope. Wait, no, what? One of them, no! That makes me sad. One of them must have been a little bit too close. So 
So obviously this method is more patient, it takes more time, but it's generally a lot better than swarming them and then having the Wallywog crush like 20 Pikmin at a time, which can be devastating. <laughs> All right, so we'll have the blue Pikmin take the part back and sure, and go ahead and take the bull bear back as well. Um, wow, everybody's just kind of going for whatever they feel like. <laughs> Honestly, not a huge problem. I guess we'll take plenty of the, the blue Pikmin. We can start taking back some of the Wallywogs too. I think they require seven, so yeah, while we're waiting, might as well. Okay, and just like that, we're we're pretty much on to our second, on to two parts already. And it's not even noon, it's not even halfway through the day. Is it dangerous to say what could go wrong? <laughs> Massage machine, I've been walking so much lately, I'm really looking forward to using this. Yeah, Almar has been getting quite a bit of exercise running around this planet. So something we haven't run into yet that I uh, have not been looking forward to meeting is, oh, they're having a tough time getting up that slope, <laughs> is the swooping snitch bug, which you'll see is a enemy that flies around and basically picks up your Pikmin and then just tosses them elsewhere and plants them in the ground. So you have to re-pick them and when you do re-pick them, they're actually leaf Pikmin instead of flower Pikmin, which is really annoying. So we've got one more... Wallywog over there. Oh, there are two blue Pikmin over there. Okay, that's good to know. I should not forget that. So there's a yellow Wallywog there. I think we'll be okay for now if we try to avoid that. Um, there's an egg there. That is something that looks really cool on the map, first of all. And this egg is, is actually quite important, but we're not going to get to it just yet. In the meantime, there's a part to find over here. Also, don't you just love that sound effect of all the Pikmin um, moving in and out of the water at the same time? So these are called Dumples. They are water enemies. However, they are very prone to getting swarmed. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, we're just gonna move on in and... Oh, I guess we lost the Pikmin. I think it's because I tried to swarm three of them. Oh man, and uh, we're getting a little bit of lag. So, welcome to the Puffy Blowhog, or whatever it's called. I, I think that's what it's called. Basically, um, it'll blow a bunch of wind at you, and while you're doing that, um, it'll deflower a bunch of the Pikmin and then scatter them around. Honestly, if you get enough Pikmin on it and start doing enough damage, you can just swarm it on the ground. It won't actually kill your Pikmin, it just causes a lot of chaos. <laughs> so... We have now found the interstellar radio. Ah, oh, Almar's got to jam out to some tunes while <laughs> while lost on this uh, planet. Not only does it emit a constant SOS signal, it also broadcasts voices from space that will brighten up my moments of boredom. The dolphin, while comfortable, becomes quite a lonely place in the depths of the night. Oh, poor Olimar. But I also find it hilarious, it constant SOS signal. As if Olimar is like always in need of help or is just trolling everybody who could potentially be looking to help him out. So we'll, we'll take back a bunch of this stuff, I guess. We have so many Pikmin on us that all of these guys are going to be moving pretty quickly. You'll note that um, we've got a bunch of Pikmin here, right? Why are they going that way? Go around this way. That's a little concerning. That's a lot of concerning. No, why are you moving that way, guys? Well, I guess it's not really catching up. Um... Well, we can swarm this one and take it out. Um, and then I guess we can swarm this one and hopefully take it out pretty quickly too. That was far from intentional. <laughs> I wanted them to go the other way around. Oh no, they're gonna go this way? That means... Uh-oh. So there are some enemies over here. We obviously have not investigated this area yet. And you'll notice there is a puffy blowhog here too. And another bull bear. So we're gonna speed up that part along as much as we can. Oh, and I just totally screwed it up. All right, go, 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 go fast, go fast before the puffy blowhog gets you and destroys everyone. We don't want our entire 100 Pikmin army to get deflowered. And it looks like it's getting ready to go. 
<laughs> oh man, it's in our base, guys. <laughs> Am I already regretting what could go wrong, which I said earlier, with a little bit too much confidence, apparently? This part will send out a daily SOS signal. I have so little time remaining, though, that I have no option but to continue my search rather than waiting for a rescue party. Having to collect every part is a bit overwhelming, but I get the impression not all parts are needed to fly the ship, um, which is actually pretty cool. I think there's a minimum of 25 parts that are considered required in order to, I guess, get a non-bad ending, and some of them are optional. There's obviously like a best ending for getting all the parts, but yeah, so now that's that's 22 parts, and great. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, so now that we've we have the chance to protect our, our friends here. I'd rather fight with the reds, so what we're gonna do is put all of our blues back for the moment. You guys can keep, you know, bringing back those and the puffy blowhog is gonna run away, which is excellent. And we just have an absolute abundance of blue Pikmin, don't we now? We totally do. Okay, yeah, so I definitely need to just give... Yeah, we have 300 blue Pikmin. What is that? And and counting. All right, so let's get a red Pikmin army here. They'll be able to do a lot more damage to the Puffy Blowhog, which is part of what's difficult about that fight out here in the water is that you have to do it with water Pikmin. Granted, um, I don't know, it wasn't, wasn't all that crazy, <laughs> admittedly. But if we have the red Pikmin, we'll be able to take it down significantly more quickly. I think we're going to want to take down the bull bear first, actually. Um, so you guys can go back. And you guys can take that back to the onion. And yeah, we'll go fight the bull bear first, just because I don't want my Pikmin getting blown into that. And then as a result, um, well, waking it up when I'm not actually ready to fight it. So if we keep up a constant stream of pressure, come on, nice. Okay. So guys, we gotta get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. Oh man. That is not appreciated. All right, so we're finally getting some uh, some damage on this thing, I think. Let's get our army back. It's on the ground. Come on guys, swarm it. This is when you can really put in all the damage. Why was that Wallywog? What? Do you guys see that? Did you guys see that? All of a sudden, off screen, I saw the Wallywog active as if it, a Pikmin had attacked it. Maybe, do you think the Puffy Blowhog blew a Pikmin over there? Either way, it just, well, just killed one of them, so. I guess there's not much more to say about it, right? But in the meantime, you guys can take back these corpses and then we'll fight the, the next bull bear. We are running a little bit low on time, so we'll, we'll make some progress. Obviously, clearing out enemies is helpful. Actually, we don't need to pick all these guys. Just because then we don't have to deal with them the next day. Assuming that's where we want to go. I am going to have to remember to pick up those two Pikmin there. But I think we can um, we can try to fight this, this bull bear real quick. Alright, Mash, come on! Really fast! Oh no, no, he's turning, he's turning! Alright, success. And so with that, why is this area important? Well, now we actually have some bomb rocks we can work with. Unfortunately, there's a Wallywog. We can try to deal with that a little bit. Will it come after us here? It will. Right? You coming? You coming, bud? Come on. I know you want to. Alright, well, if you're not going to, then, um... We'll have these guys start working on this. And they're making some good progress, actually. So there's one random red pick there. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup. I bet as we get further along this bridge, yep, yep, yep. All right, that's our signal, guys. <laughs> We entered Wallywog territory, so not about to deal with that. Oh. Oh no, there's the swooping snitch bug. Do you guys see it? It's just preying upon my Pikmin waiting there and tossing them all over the place. 
Okay, so this is not good. Um, we're gonna try and take it down. It's a lot easier said than done. Come on. All right, well, I guess it ran away. Um, unfortunately, all right, we're gonna have to go <laughs> collect some of the Pikmin that got scattered around. So I think that'll be the current task. At the very least, those Pikmin are planted in the ground. What? How did one get stuck over there? Oh, it's still... <laughs> I appreciate your, your labor <laughs> in attempting to... Oh my goodness, you stupid snitch bug. I appreciate your labor <laughs> in trying to unearth a bunch of nectar to help out your friends, but... But right now, I really just need you to hang out with me. Alright, let's pick up these guys. No Pikmin left behind. Except for two. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll have time to really nectar up a lot of my guys. Well, we'll see. I'll deposit these two. And then I can pluck this one. Nah, I should have left it, honestly. Because a lot of these guys, I think, will be, um... Oh, I can't even... Alright. I'll have to accept that I'm not gonna be able to flower up these guys. What? No, give me back my one Pikmin! Give me back my one Pikmin! <laughs> Look at that! Give it back! I hate those things so much. Alright, you go away. Do not swoop it up. Stop taking it right when it's about to enter the onion. Okay, you know what? I'll I'll live with it. <laughs> I'll live with it, I guess. <laughs> that stupid swooping snitch bug. All right, that's gonna be our top priority next time. We gotta take that thing down. If you have a big army of Pikmin, it's not too bad. But it, whenever it struck me, I was already trying to you know clear up my army or only had a few Pikmin on me, which makes it really difficult to track it down. Um, but you can knock it out of the air and then swarm it. And that way it won't be flying all over the place, picking up your Pikmin, throwing them around everywhere. Just because it's really, it's really time consuming to have to pick all of your Pikmin like that. But at the very least, they're pretty close to our home base. And I think if we leave them, there's a good chance they'll flower. So, that'll be alright, I guess. Anyways, nine days since impact. There appears to be a large cluster of parts here. If my calculations are correct, then I should be able to recover virtually all of my missing ship parts. But not quite all of them. Unfortunately, there still seem to be some pieces that remain unaccounted for. As you'll notice, the sum for, you know, being able to increase our ship's capabilities adds up to 29. Obviously, there are 30 parts, so there's still uh, one more big part we need to find. I must find seven more parts to further increase the dolphin's range. Okay. So we lost a decent number of Pikmin. Unfortunately, there was that one that got crushed by Wallywog off screen. I don't, and there were the water dumpful ones, uh, just because they took the wrong path back to the ship. But it's all right, it's all right. Not everything has to go according to plan, right? We have a wonderful amount of blue Pikmin, a still solid amount of red Pikmin, which we'll obviously probably need to flower up, and a decent number of yellow Pikmin. So in the end, it's not, not too awful. So, I'm fine with that, and at this point, we'll see, I think the distance spring gets pretty difficult, so I'm really going to be aiming for two parts a day at this point, because we're going to have to take down some Wallywogs, some Bull Bears, there's even another Armored, armored Cannon Beetle, there are those puffy Blowhogs, and uh, some really tough enemies, and, you know, even a, a couple puzzles to navigate, so, yeah, going to be aiming for a couple parts a day, and I hope you guys are excited to see what that all entails, but until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.